HotWireFoamCutterInfo.com presents the Vertical Tabletop Cutter. The Vertical Tabletop Cutter is meant for use in medium to larger scale projects. It employs both wooden and PVC components to maintain a lightweight yet functional design. The wooden base may be created at any dimensions your project requires, but the recommended size is 18 inches by 24 inches. There are two underlying supports of 2x4 wooden planks. These measure at 24 inches in length and will run the entire width of the cutting surface. The overlying surface can be any type of wood or hardboard composite. You may choose to use pegboard, MDF or plywood. With this size tabletop cutter, any thickness less than one quarter inch may not be strong enough to stand up to repeated use. Also, consider using a material that is smooth and allows easy movement of all types of foam over the cutting surface. The PVC overarm assembly is quite simple. It provides the perfect combination of rigidity and flexibility to maintain its shape and provide constant tension on the cutting wire. The overarm assembly is composed of three main structural components. These are two pieces of half inch schedule 40 PVC tubing and a single 90 degree elbow. The height and depth of the cutter will be dependent upon the dimensions that you chose for your specific tabletop cutter. Pictured here, the height and depth of the PVC arms are 12 inches in length. To attach the overarm assembly to the wooden base, a half inch Schedule 40 PVC T-coupler is used. You may attach the entire assembly to the wooden support with two screws for a constant 90 degree angled cut, or if one screw is used, it will allow the overarm assembly to pivot and provide a wide range of angled cuts. The vertical tabletop cutter uses two components for the attachment of nichrome and electrical connection wire. You will need to reference the website for diagrams and videos relating to the forward facing bolt spring end cap assembly and the underside hanger bolt assembly. This video will not reference any diagrams nor tutorials relating to these assemblies, so please reference the website for additional information. Here are a few optional attachments for the tabletop cutter that may also be covered on the website. The first addition may be a horizontal tabletop cutter which may be placed at either end of the cutting surface. With the addition of two T-nut fasteners and related components, you can gain the capability of cutting large sections of foam at a variety of thicknesses. The second optional attachment is a guide fence which will aid in cutting straight sections of foam. You will need to add 1 by 4 planks of wood at either end of the cutting surface. And these are attached to the 2 by 4 support planks using L brackets and wood screws. You may then take the remaining plank of 1 by 4 wood and using hand clamps attach it to your cutting surface as a standard guide fence. And this guide fence will help you achieve exact measured cuts and greatly reduce wavy or inconsistent cuts throughout your foam. And now let's start creating our tabletop cutter by taking one of the 2x4 planks and marking the center. However, if you're using pegboard, you will need to take the plank of wood and then using the on-center mark as a guide, find the closest overlying hole. Or it's always easier to just remeasure. Again, just remark the wood, which will ensure proper placement of the underside hanger bolt assembly and allow the nichrome wire to pass through the pegboard. Once the board is marked, you will need to drill a hole far enough down the wood that allows the figure of eight ring to have enough clearance to hold the nichrome wire, but not come in contact with the overlying pegboard. If you are unsure the size of drill bit to use for your hanger bolt, 
choose a bit that covers the center portion of the hanger bolt but does not cover the wood threads. Then be sure that you are drilling as close to the bottom as possible. And once the hole is drilled, you will need to place the hanger bolt before any overlying surface is placed. You can advance the hanger bolt onto the wood by using a technique referred to as double nutting. This technique requires the placement of two hex nuts onto the hanger bolt that are immediately adjacent to one another. Once placed, you will need to attach a wrench to the outermost bolt as the innermost bolt will hold the double nut in place. Then, simply advance the hanger bolt onto the wooden surface. Be sure to leave one hex nut directly against the wood, but the outermost nut will need to be removed so the remainder of the underside hanger bolt assembly can be completed at a later time. You will now need to attach the overlying wooden surface to both of the 2x4s. If pegboard is selected, you'll want to make sure your peg holes are lined up as you previously measured. When screwing down the overlying wooden surface, you'll want to make sure that all your wooden components are plumb and squared off. You can use any type of wood screw, but make sure that they're countersunk as to not bind the foam when it passes over the top. Once all the screws are placed, you may find it helpful to take a small chisel or metal file and take down the rough edges around the screws. This will allow a smooth transition of your foam over the cutting surface. If you intend on attaching a horizontal tabletop cutter, you may find this an opportune time to drill the holes required for the T-nut fasteners. Once you have the over arm assembled with the end cap assembly and related electrical connections, you will want to attach it to the wooden support so that it lines up with the underside hanger bolt assembly. Before attempting to attach the overarm, it is recommended to pre-drill and place the attachment screws into the PVC T-coupler. This makes attachment to the wooden surface much easier. With the overarm assembly firmly attached to the wooden supports, you will now need to focus on the electrical components. You should already have one leader wire from your end cap assembly, but will now need to attach the wiring to your underside hanger bolt assembly. With the table tipped on end, you can easily attach the wire to the electrical component. First start off by making sure you have enough slack in your connection wire in case your components need to be changed in the future. Using a staple gun, a few lightly placed staples should help keep your connection wire out of the way. Take care as to not damage your connection wire when placing the staples into the wood. Once you have the connection wire attached, you will need to account for the rest of your wire slack. First start off by cutting some electrical tape and bind the loose wires. You may even opt to place a stress loop to help protect your electrical attachments. Then take an electrical tack to attach the bundled wires to your wooden supports. Once positioned, use a hammer to secure the tack in place. The last step is to assemble the underside hanger bolt assembly. There is additional information and tutorial videos regarding this assembly located on the website. Now that the tabletop cutter is almost completely assembled, it should be apparent why the hanger bolt needs to be attached to the wooden supports before the overlying surface. Seeing as how there is very little room to work with once that overlying wooden surface is attached, 
there is just enough space to attach the remaining metal components. The nichrome wire should first be attached to the figure of 8 ring and the nichrome wire is then passed through the corresponding hole in the pegboard. Finish by attaching the remaining washer and wing nut. This next step is included just in case the peg hole and hanger bolt assembly does not line up or if you have a wooden surface other than pegboard. You will first need to determine the approximate point of entry for the nichrome wire and start out by drilling a small guide hole. Then enlarge this hole with a larger drill bit. But while advancing the larger drill bit, angle the drill as to chew away at a linear portion of pegboard. Then enter the next closest peg hole and angle towards your guide hole. These two simple maneuvers should open up a straight line to allow passage of the nichrome wire. Next, take a chisel to clean up the cutting surface. Then take a metal file and remove any excess pegboard from inside the cutting hole. Finally, one last round of chiseling to clean up the surface. You should now be able to see the underside hanger bolt assembly and figure of 8 ring through the new hole. Once you've passed the nichrome wire, reposition your tabletop cutter in order to attach the nichrome wire to the overarm assembly. And now that the tabletop cutter is laying flat, grasp your nichrome wire and attach it to the end cap assembly. It is recommended to make a loop in your nichrome wire at a distance that requires you to bend down the overarm assembly. The natural rigidity of the PVC overarm assembly and the extension spring will keep the nichrome wire under tension as it heats up during cutting. And there you have it, the vertical tabletop cutter. And remember that you can attach wooden supports on either side of your cutter to facilitate a cutting guide fence. You may also attach T-nut fasteners, which allows you to add a horizontal tabletop cutter. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the website at hotwirefoamcutterinfo.com.